Hey friends, welcome back to Daily Sews and Stuff. I'm Brandilyn Daly and today we are talking about calibration. I wore my finished is better than perfect shirt because pretty much any time I've mentioned calibration, I've mentioned finished is better than perfect. You can see that all right here in these videos. But I haven't quite defined when we can actually say finished. You know, what is that point where we're like, you know what, that's good enough. And you know, that's kind of an important step. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. The too long didn't read answer is, you want it to be a quarter inch or less off of one side of your 16 by 24 inch rectangle. However, as with pretty much everything else regarding projectors and sewing and patterns, it depends. <laughs> it's nuanced and it depends on your setup and what you sew. So we're gonna dive into that a little bit today. I did make a blog post about this where you might find a little bit more information, maybe something slightly different than I say during the video. But in the video, I'm also gonna be able to show you a lot more visuals than the blog post has. So you can find that at uh, dailysewsandstuff.com. All right, let's dive in. Okay, so my normal overhead camera is not working. So we are improvising. Um, and that's why this is not actually straight on down from the top and why things might be um, a little less clear, unfortunately, because you're not looking at a square image because my camera itself is tilted off. But we are going to persevere. All right, so to understand how close is close enough, we kind of first have to understand about calibration. If you remember, when you were printing a pattern, you would have that one inch square that you needed to check to make sure that it was actually the right size. And you also knew pretty much that your printer was going to print a square image unless something malfunctioned and that you could probably print at 100% and get that one inch square, two inch, four centimeters, whatever your pattern called for. So that's basically what we're doing with calibration, but it's different because there's so many more variables introduced by projecting versus by printing with a well-maintained, well-functioning printer. There's kind of two main goals with calibration. First, we need to have it a square image, and then we need to have it the correct percentage um, in order to actually have your one inch square measure one inch. Now, if you look at this one, you can see this actually is not accurate right now. I um, have it set to 28, which was what I was using on another projector. So if I switch this to 25.7, which is this projector's zoom, uh, you will see that that is now actually one inch there. Um, so we'll come back to this and keep talking a little bit more about it. Let's flip over to the keystone um, thing. Now I will actually put a still picture of this in the video, so hopefully you can see it better than this. This is a image done by a member of the Protectors for Sewing group that shows you how to get your keystones worked out so that your image is square. And that's important because say we're looking at a rectangle pattern piece, we want that piece to actually be a rectangle. Let me give you an example. I'm gonna use this Adventure Toddler, Adventure Toddler backpack uh, from my friend Kathleen at Sunny Mountain Patterns because there are quite a few square or rectangle pieces that will illustrate this very well. So right here, you can see that there's a rectangle right here. And whenever I cut this out, I actually need this to be a rectangle. If my keystone is not correct, it will look more like a trapezoid or perhaps kind of only on one side kicked out. And that will be a problem because my pieces won't fit together because they're not actually squares anymore or rectangles, they don't have square corners. Let me show you another example that might be even more clear. This is a apostrophe my fit pattern um, that I am currently working on for myself and I have uh, these pieces cut out and some of them are not sewn together yet. I will need this shape to be the shape that I cut out. This is my actual correct pattern piece. Now, 
if this were keystoned, which I'm going to simulate by moving my mat, if this were keystoned, you know, my image would be very different. Probably wouldn't be quite that dramatic. It'd be more something more like that. Or maybe like that. But since I want this image to be exactly what I cut out, you know, let's pretend this is my pattern piece, um, my paper pattern piece. And we want it to actually match up. Let's not make fun of my terrible <laughs> cutting job. This one is cut shorter on purpose because it's the lining layer. Okay. So, yes, I did a terrible cutting job. We'll ignore that for the moment. Um, but this needs to actually be this piece. You know, if the projector were keystoned, that wouldn't work. That would be a very different piece that I would cut out that wouldn't be the right size for me. So keystone is important. We want to get that right. We want to have a square image that what we're looking at is the right shape. Now we also need to make sure it's the right size. And that's where this uh, calibration tool really comes in handy. You're going to use it to adjust your keystones. That's what this picture is. But we really want to make sure that we use it to make things the right size. Now remember when you were printing, if your one inch square got off, the pattern itself would be very, very off. Calibration tool is gonna help you get the right size. And so if something is messed up in one little corner, that doesn't necessarily mean that it is magnified across the whole pattern. However, we want to make sure that something as small as a one inch square is dead on when we're calibrating. The accurate calibration seems important if we want a well-fitting pattern, but again, approaching the point, exactly how accurate do we have to be? Okay, so like a lot of discussions surrounding projectors, there's some nuance here. If you are, say, a historical costumer and you're working with a corset which has eight pieces, um, but they're small pieces, but there's eight of them, if you have just a tiny little bit off, uh, if you're an eighth of an inch off on every single piece, an eighth of an inch off on one piece is really not a big deal. But when you add it up across the eight pieces that would make up that one garment, that would be an entire inch off. And that's where you start thinking, oh, actually that makes a difference. However, say you're cutting out two small pieces that will be a child's shirt, you know, the front and the back, and they're also an eighth of an inch off. That's a quarter of an inch off around the entire shirt. And frankly, I could get a quarter of an inch off just by the fact that I don't always sew super accurately. So that is something to take into consideration for sure. If you are working with wovens, if you are working with patterns that have a lot of small pieces, if you are working with very large patterns that are bigger than your projection is and you're gonna have to do some shifting, those are all people who are probably gonna to wanna to be a little bit more accurate in their calibration than those who generally work with stretchy fabrics or generally work with patterns that have fewer pieces that go into each um, garment. And people who are working with smaller sizes such as children's sizes or the small adult sizes. And you know, then there's the human error factor. You saw um, that I did not cut that piece perfectly. Um, human error really comes into it. I don't always sew super accurately either. It depends on what I'm working on. And I sort of take that into account too. If I'm doing something that is um, knit, I'm a little less careful usually than if it's woven because the wovens do have to fit that much better um, because they don't have that give of the knit fabric. So approaching the point, and forgive the fact that I am not a mathy person, but basically there's that exponential effect where any misalignment during calibration is gonna get more off the further from the miscalibration that you get. Okay, so like see right here, I just had this one little bit of miscalibration and that's due to my surface being uneven. My surface over here is even. So this doesn't affect this. However, if my one inch square were just a tiny bit off, it would make a really big difference across the rest of it. I'm gonna move it over here because these squares are actually one inch and it's easier to see. 
Okay, let's change this to, uh, instead of 25.7 to 25. Now that's only a little bit too small, right? That's pretty close to what it was before. And really, you can see that it's only one line that's off now. Mm, I mean, here's a little off. It's a little off, but it's really, it's not bad. Looking bad right here at this one inch. But when you look bigger to this eight inch, you notice, oh, that's a little more off. And then we look at the 12 inch and we say, oh, that's a little more off. And then we look at the 18 by 24, I'm sorry, is that 18 or 16? I can't really read that. The next biggest one. And we say, oh, okay, that's getting more off. And we look at the 20 by 30 and we, um, I'm not sure what this is actually. And we say, okay, no, that's like an entire half inch off over here. That's gonna make a huge difference in cutting our pattern. The smaller that your measurement is, on this calibration grid, the more spot on it needs to be so that the entire grid will fit better. This is why a lot of times I will tell you to make sure that you get your bigger boxes lined up first. This is the 20 by 30 box. Okay, so I'm gonna focus on this 20 by 30 box first, realizing there's some misalignment over here due to unlevel surface. And as I get this right, these will get more precise too. So I'm going to cheat because I know 25.7 is right. Um, so I'm going to type that in. Now I'm looking, looking at the fact that my, whoo, having issues, that my 20 by 30 rectangle is except for this corner, pretty close to on. It does have a little bit of misalignment, little bit, little bit, but it's mostly on. Okay, cool. So because it is mostly on, now when you get into these smaller pieces, you see, okay, that is bang on. Those one inch squares are exactly right. This eight inch square is exactly right. This 12 by 12 square is exactly right. These are all perfectly lined up because I went with the bigger one and that made the smaller ones more perfect. So that means that the smaller, the calibration grid that you can see when you're doing this, the more precise you have to be. If all you can see is an eight inch square because you have a very small cutting space, then you wanna make sure that eight inch square is as perfect as possible. The bigger the square though, the more it can be a little bit off. Now, my rule of thumb tends to be to look at this 20 by 30 line, which has a little bit of a green haze highlighter around it, and say that that one needs to be within a quarter inch um, on one side. So like three sides need to be perfect and the fourth side to be within a quarter inch for me to say, okay, that is close enough. Getting within a quarter of an inch on your 16 by 24 inch square will have you at 99% accuracy. And for most of us, that is good enough. Um, one of the other admins on the Projectors for Sewing group, uh, her Facebook handle says Fuyo, Fuyo Amy Wantanabe. I think, I'm really sorry if I didn't say that correctly. Um, she said that the squares need to be right on and the rectangles being a bit off is okay. So if you look, the smaller boxes are squares and the larger ones are rectangles. So that might be a really good rule of thumb too. So again, by Sasha's calculations, if you're a quarter of an inch off one line of the 16 by 24 inch box, you're at 99% accuracy. And that's kind of the minimum that we look at when you post on the group and say, is this good enough? So I know it can be a lot of work to get your projector calibrated correctly, especially the first time, and there's so many factors that kind of play into each other um, and affect each other whenever you are calibrating and it can get really frustrating. But this is why you need to keep working at it until it is close enough. If you're one of those who tends to err on the side of finished is better than perfect. And if you're one of the people who tends to err on the perfect side, I hope this kind of gives you some goals to look for and tells you 
where you can go ahead and stop. Because if you're trying to make it absolutely perfect, you might be making yourself crazy for absolutely no reason. I mean, I couldn't get it perfect here because there is a, an unlevel little hump right here. And actually my whole thing is, if I push down on the table, you can see how that actually makes my projection exactly on rather than being just that tiny a little bit off. So having a level surface is gonna factor majorly into this. And then, you know, like I said, depending on what you're cutting and what your sewing techniques are and what your garments are that you're making and what fabrics you're working with, that's gonna make that difference too. So hopefully <laughs> this has been a very convoluted answer that has helped you figure out you know, when you can say, you know what, that is finished. It might not be perfect, but it is good enough for what I am doing. All right, guys, I hope this was helpful to you. I hope it cleared up any questions you had about calibration and when to stop. Um, if you found it helpful and someone asks a question that this video would answer, I would love if you would drop it as a comment answer to their question. Um, I would also love for you to like and comment and share and subscribe so that my channel can keep on building. Uh, I'm really excited about the places that we're going and you guys have just been an awesome audience. So thank you so much for that. All right, I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching my videos. Subscribe, like, and comment.